And we got the boys back mm. from uh, WrestleMania. Mm. Yeah, thank God. I don't know how we uh, made it through a day. A day, two days. Two days. Oh, was it two? Who knows? You didn't even notice. That's wonderful, Anthony. (laughs) That's wonderful. The hell knows where they are or what they do. We did a show. It it came off great. uh, True. I think we could just toss those two guys. True. And then they could write horrible articles about us. Right. Us. Hey, I got no problem with the guy. Oh, seemed, that's true. Seemed to be fine with me. I hear I do. <laughs> I hear you might have a little problem. I, I haven't read it. Yeah, well, oh, wait till you read it. Did he really badmouth me, that jerk? Off. He I was, certainly did. It, it's a, Rick Delgado, the old producer. It's a, you going to badmouth me, you prick? When I saw you in California, we had a nice lunch together. Hey, how are you? We went out and ate. You you jerk off. Yeah. I didn't even read it. Well. Why? Why, Rick? I never had a bad word to say about you. Why? Yeah, our old well, producer because, just because uh, you uh, you you suck uh, on the show. I was always said. Yeah, you're yeah, a you, funny guy, but you but suck on you the radio. Screw, show. You screw the show up. Yeah. Uh, Opie is uh, a douche yeah. who uh, needs to uh, pretty much be sexually assaulted just picture, in the worst way possible for a man. Yeah, just picture um, some kind of uh, shower scene. Yeah, prison yeah. shower scene. And uh, me, I'm a comedic genius. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I don't think I really have a problem. Uh, well, because you hate cool. confrontation, you ass. No. You have admitted just... on this show that you hate confrontation. I'm beloved. You you avoid all confrontation. <laughs> hence, everyone thinks you're, you, you smell like roses. I am beloved. Because your daddy and mommy fought. Right. But when you were a child, you hate confrontation. Yes. But guess what? It helps you with your career because no one has a bad word to say about you. I should be a politician. <laughs> <laughs> this douchebag. Are you allowed to say that? I don't know. You should be. Yeah. Not allowed to say that one? I don't think the. the this douche. Part. This douche. And that douche, uh, Chauncey Hayden. Just obsessed with the Opie and Anthony show. Totally. Because, well, just continues to write bad articles about the Opie and Anthony show. I think it's just buddy Howie's obsessed. I don't even know if Howie uh, likes him anymore. I think that's why. I think his buddy Howie threw him out or something. And yeah, well, it's uh, what is it? It's an upcoming issue of Stepping Out magazine. They put Rick on the cover, and uh, Rick is uh, a bit pissed off. For what reason? I don't even know. To Who knows? be quite uh, quite honest with you, but. Um, what does he say? Uh, what does he say here? I, I didn't even know we were going to do this, but uh, 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 how do you want to? Uh, well, I have to read the whole article now. Yeah, you got to kind of read. Um, well, at least the parts about us. And, uh, and... All right. Uh, God. All right. On St. Pat's sex scandal. We're all over the ball field here. I apologize. We'll, we'll get this back on track. This is his take. He was asked certain questions about certain events uh, during his tenure as producer of our program. Right. And uh, he answered these questions that Chauncey threw out at him, uh, knowing he was just baiting him. Right. Chauncey Hayden is an ass. Uh, he He's he's pretty much a failed um, writer. He, he's gone nowhere over the years. He's been with this crappy little rag magazine that, that you pick up for free. At you bars pick up for restaurants. free. It's all he's done his whole career. Um, he doesn't. Ugh, he doesn't even try to get both sides of his story. Did he try contacting us about this? Of course not. No, because we would have said, "Here's the deal with Rick, no. and here's why he's so bitter with everything." No, I would have said, "Go f yourself." Chelsea. Well, of course, we'll talk about it on our radio show, which reaches a hell of a lot more people than your dumb magazine. But I probably would have uh, talked to him because uh, we're probably friends. Because I'm. Beloved, because you don't like confrontation. I never said I don't like confrontation, Opie. Don't get me started. We're gonna have to fist fight again. Where's Rick to break it up? <laughs> break up the fisticuffs that we're always having. <laughs> well, there's a lot of people that wonder why Rick oh, wasn't uh, wasn't brought along when we made our big comeback in radio. Yeah, and it's it's as simple as this. He wanted to be a star in his own right. He yep. did not want to be a producer. Yeah. And we did not want to deal with that anymore. So we had to move on. You want a producer that wants to stay pretty much for the most part behind the scenes and work on a radio show. He did not want that. His goal was to get his own radio show. 
So when we had the opportunity to build a whole brand new staff when we came back to radio, we moved on from him. Uh -huh. Plus, he had a pretty good gig. He was working for uh, Preston and Steve down there in Philly, which is a, a well-known radio show. Yeah. So it's like, look, you're doing okay. We're moving on. We don't need you. Simple as that. That's that's how it it, it went down. But uh, the stuff he says about uh, uh, about me is just ri completely ridiculous. I don't even know what to tell you. On St. Pat's uh, sex scandal, according to this article, you offended people all over the world with with your St. Patrick Cathedral sex capade. Yeah. Well, <sighs> First of all, it was a bit Aunt and I came up with yeah. jointly based on a magazine article that we read in our office one day. Right. And 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 Rick had nothing to do with what it. What the hell? He was just the producer of the show that came up with the idea. Yeah. Uh, doesn't that go beyond just doing your job when so many uh, are outraged by something you created? That's BS. Are people really offended by it? He, he, uh, this is how Rick answers it. How can a few people decide for everyone else what is offensive? I find that effing offensive. I don't want people representing how I should feel. Just like Reverend Al Sharpton, here's an unelected uh, guy who gets offended by everything. So I can't say the N-word because of my skin color? Seems like someone listens to our radio show, by the uh, way. Yeah. Uh, to me, that's offensive and racist. Think about it. Here's a black guy who says you can't use certain words to describe black people if you're not black. You'll never win that argument. I know that, but somebody has to say it. Nobody ever says to Reverend Al Sharpton, Hey, Effer, you can't say S about white people. How about that? Wow. Can, but, I, say, can I interject? There's nothing worse than a dummy trying to sound socially poignant. <laughs> Shut your face. <laughs> Stop trying to sound bright. Ugh. You're not tearing the walls down on racial stereotypes. You're not kicking the kicking the doors in. Yeah, it's trite nonsense. Wow, Al Sharpton can say the N word and you can't. How deep of you, Rick? Uh, How, but what do you want to do? A contest for that? <laughs> you throw muffins at somebody while they said it. <laughs> Shut your mouth. Uh, <laughs> but nobody will say that to him. He gets a free pass. Brian Florence, who along with his wife was busted inside St. Pat's Cathedral for having sex, died unexpected, unexpectedly. You can't Unexpectedly, of a heart attack. How did it happen? I was just having sex with him. Some say the stress of the publicity is what killed him. How does that make you feel, Rick? Well, he was due to go to court right before he died. It was almost like God saying, you know what? I'll take care of this one. <laughs> that kid still got it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he certainly does. What? What the who the? I don't, I don't think God would take out. You know, a person for having sex in a church, you dummy. Well, he apparently did. I don't mind that. I just prefer a better joke there. I said, yeah. I'll take care of this one. Uh, Mike kind of smiled into the phone when he said it. I'll Ugh. take care of this one. Without getting into it, the guy had a lot of uh, personal issues going on that that, that were, had nothing to do yeah. with, with the whole sex for Sam thing that went, went on back in the day. Might have been his drug-using history. <laughs> well, you know what? I'll take care of this one. And he took care of it. However... All the radio people I talk about, the St. Patrick's incident and the tsunami song, have patted me on the back. Why are they pat? See, this is why we did not want him when we came back to radio. Exactly. It's all about Rick. Everyone was patting me on the back. Why were me, they patting me, you on me. the back? You were a dumb producer behind the scenes, you idiot. Why, while his head bobbed up and down in their laps. <laughs> Atta boy. Atta boy. A little deeper. Atta boy. <laughs> they all say, dude, you got aft. They all work in the industry, and they admire I did something they couldn't do themselves for fear of losing their jobs. Mm. Uh, on Opie and Anthony, this is where it gets really, really interesting. Your former radio pals, Opie and Anthony, are making millions today t on both XM and terrestrial radio. Why mm. are they working and you're not? First of all, the St. Pat's incident uh, is coming up on six years this summer. In that time... Is it six? Yeah. Wow. 2000 what two right 2000 uh, August of 2000 so it's Damn. about five and a half years ago mm -hmm. within the last five and a half years our old producer Rick had a job for the most part for yeah. most of that time he wrote so it says your former radio pals Opie and Anthony are making millions to today on both XM and terrestrial radio why are they working and you're not that's the se part everybody gets paid except for me Rick forgets that when we all got fired for the St. Pat uh St. Pat's incident Mm -hmm. He got paid for four or five months. And yeah. shortly after that, if not during that time, he got his next radio gig, which was with Preston and Steve. Right. He's friends with Preston or Steve, one of them. Steve, I think. Yeah. And then after that, he went right from Philly to work here in New York City at Hot 97. Where in there was he not getting paid? 
And then he got fired for the Tsunami song. He took a few months off. And then he got another gig in San Francisco. Rick, where were you not getting paid? He wants to get paid now because he, he blew up his radio career? From, uh, yeah. Wasn't getting paid from uh, us, I guess. The guys whose names are on the shingle are protected because they're bringing in the ad dollars. But to be honest, O and A aren't bringing in any ad dollars these days. Really? Really, Rick? Uh, when do you uh, get to look at the books for uh, XM and for uh, CBS? When do you get to look at that? Did they take you up there and give you a personal look at uh, what this show bills? You're privy to that information, are you? Are you? That right there, any writer uh, that that's worth a crap, which which uh, that douche isn't, um, would have said, "Oh, where'd you get this information?" Or then would have gone and tried to find the information so he could print it out. But Chauncey isn't about that. Chauncey's about just trying to make a, a, a little sensation for himself and to make Howie happy. Yeah. His whole his whole uh, gig in life is to try to make Howie happy. Right. So where's where'd you get that info from, Rick? Yeah. Where you can call our show right now. Tell me where you got that info from. We're not bringing in the ad dollars, really. The info I got, I hear we're doing just fine. I certainly heard uh, heard we're doing very well. The only guys in radio who bring in big ad dollars are Howard Stern and Imus. Oh, yeah. uh, that is completely false. Really. The fact is, there was an article about satellite radio, and the ad dollars are not uh, doing uh, too well in in satellite radio, where Howard is uh, exclusively heard at this point. Yeah, he's not bringing in ad dollars, Rick. And I miss if you if you know anything about this business, it's turning out that uh, Citadel made a horrible deal to bring Imus on board. Mm -hmm. uh, and then he writes, "Nobody else comes close. You helped uh, make them millionaires, and in return, you got fired." Rick Delgado did not help us make millions. He's baiting him with those questions is what he does. <laughs> Anthony and I, him. the chemistry that is Anthony and I made us millions. We could have had a monkey producing millions. our radio show, especially back then. Millions. We could have. And, and, right. We could have. And, and we still would have been just fine. <laughs> how, does he, how did he make us millionaires? I would love to know that. I know. This dope forgets that, first of all, I brought him I brought him on board in radio. He didn't have yeah. a radio gig. I helped him get his first radio gig at BAB. Then he moved down to West Palm Beach, Florida, and he wanted to move back to New York because he had a fiance. And I said, you know what, don't, don't move back until you have a gig. He didn't listen to me. He moved back to New York, and he was out of work, of course. And then we kind of felt sorry for him at the time because he wasn't a producer, so we brought him on board. Right. And we developed him. We developed him as a producer. <sighs> Got him an unbelievable salary. Unbelievable. When we moved, uh, when, when we were at NEW here in New York, the bosses wanted to fire him because they didn't think he was a good producer. Anthony and I walked out that day to save his gig. <sighs> he yeah, forgets all this stuff. He, yeah, we actually left the show and said, we're not going to get on the show. We're not going to do the show. Until Rick is brought back and there's this controversy is over and, and there's no threats to his job. Right. We said that. We, we walked off the show for him. And then in the end, I think he was the first producer in the history of radio that got an agent, hence why we didn't really want him when we came back to regular radio. And guess who the agent is? Our agent! Right. You ungrateful F? Uh, you helped them... You you helped make the millionaires, and in return, you got fired. Right. I thought they would have my back. We had his back. He was getting paid for four or five months. And I talked to someone at CBS yesterday about this. Yeah. They go, this guy was getting, uh, uh, he was pretty much overpaid. Huge. He was making more money as a producer than anyone else in the company. He was making a huge amount of money. Uh, I thought they would have my back. I learned early on that one of those two people had my back, and one of them didn't. Rick... Anthony didn't have your back either. He, uh, he, he can give a flying well, F about you and your dumb career. Well, look, if he wants to say I had his back, who's to argue? And you know that. Ant just doesn't like confrontation. I, um... How did he have your back, Rick? No. Were you, was he paying your bills, you dope? Well, you know, I, I was there for him. You want to fight? We're going to fight. <laughs> Let's go. Fist of cuffs. I know you've been Where's working Rick? out in the gym, but I'm, I'm ready too, bro. <laughs> I've been doing a lot of core training lately. You're done, man.
You better get Stephen here to get in between our. our I fist. had to get between them and break up fisticuffs. Wait till you get front, to that part. One in the back. Yes. I sure I'm a lucky boy. Yeah. When fists were flying, I make sure I'm in the room. So one of us, uh, so you had his back and I didn't. I don't know what I was supposed to do. We all got fired. We were all getting paid. And then he moved on to Philly and got another gig based on our radio show. Yeah. I pretty much had my back. That was pretty much who I was. I was taking care of numero uno. <laughs> who didn't have your back? And, and this is where it gets interesting. Long pause. Long pause. Make sure you get dramatic. And then he, and then he says, who do you think? Opie. Who do you think? Who do you think? Opie. Really? The guy that uh, mm -hmm. brought you uh, to radio. Okay. Yeah. I didn't have your back. You would think those guys are friends, but they're not. Uh -huh. And then Chauncey uh, uh, asks, what do you mean? What, whatever do you mean by and, that, Rick? And, and this is the best part of the article, which actually made me laugh. Let's just say I got in between them more than a couple of times. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about fists being thrown. All this off the air. Now, I will go on record as saying me and Oak did have a few tiffs before the program. Uh... But we were professionals, so we got on the air and did the show. They never even came close to fists being thrown uh, in the 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 uh, in our office, in the hall, on the way, in the studio. It just never happened. Yeah, and yeah. Rick never had to intervene in any of those uh, uh, discussions that we were having. We've been doing this show for 13 years, something like that, maybe 14 uh, coming up this summer. If if we truly hated each other, why would we still be doing this radio show together? I certainly could do another type of radio show. Anthony certainly could do another uh, type of radio show. And we'd both be quite successful. As successful as we are now? Probably not, but enough to make a fine living. Sure. And, and and after 13 years of course... Put it that way, I'm leaving. <laughs> <laughs> after 13 years, of course, we've had our problems, just like any other relationship. But to say that we've actually fought... That Rick had a breakup like fights that were coming to fists. There was never any any throwing of fists. Oh, All this off the air, Anthony. Yeah, of course. Uh, what do they fight about? Just catty BS. It was, it, it was usually about someone's girlfriend coming in, or it was over someone playing a video game instead of prepping for the show. Who was that? No, Opie was constantly playing video games. <laughs> yeah, me. When he should have been prepping for the show. It's, it's nonsense. Neither one of you preps for the show. Of course. <laughs> of course. Sorry, I didn't mean to ruin the show, Rick. Uh, and that, I, I was... Uh, <laughs> uh, you're ruining the show. And, and that, uh, we were doing afternoons. Yeah. So... We would come in a hell of a lot earlier than we do now. Like now, we come in uh, about an hour before the show and go through all the newspapers and, and websites and get everything together and, and do whatever prep we do for the show. Uh, back then, we'd get in at about noon for a 3 o'clock show. And know why? Because we hated our freaking personal lives. Of course. You know, the one I had with your sister! <laughs> <laughs> a little conflict of interest there. Thank God the Delgados are out of my effing life. Well, not exactly out. <laughs> Still writing stuff about you. Oh, really? So so I would get on the computer and play video games. It wasn't a problem. That was part of, like, the hanging out with everybody in the office thing. When you got three hours before the show, you're not going to start prepping uh, uh, three hours before the show. So would get on there, drink a few beers with the lunatic alcoholic Ben, and uh, uh, play video games. That wasn't a problem. It was, I, and then I talk about the games on the air. It was good for breaks. It was more of a uh, like a social atmosphere. We were hanging. I was, yeah. I would, I would look at websites, and I was actually like hanging Britney Spears posters, all that crap back then. Anthony was like playing video games, but it led to us just kind of talking about what we want to do that day. Yeah, this guy is full of. It, it's just amazing that someone like this could just get an article printed like this, and and there's no accountability now, whatsoever. Because of Chauncey Douche Hayden. Uh, we'll do part two of this article after the break. Oh, tease. Well, you know, because he gets into what he really thinks of me, and he had a chance to say this to my face, and he knows that we were right down on the street in front of this very building, probably a couple of months ago. 
and uh, n- not an inkling that he was going to say any of this. Never said it to your face, that's for sure. No. Wouldn't say it to mine because I'm so beloved. Well, because people are scared to say it to my face. He says that, but he says he's not. But he was on the sidewalk in front of us trying to get a gig at this radio station we work for. Yep. Because he used to work for the PD that has since been fired. <laughs> We'll do part two of this article as uh, an old producer is a bit jealous of our success. A lot of people seem to be a bit jealous of our success and love to take their shots. Uh, we'll we'll get into the juicy stuff. I mean, it's really, really juicy. And mm. What do you think of Jim Norton? Ooh, is it good? Oh, it's not Ooh, good. Jimmy. Not oh, very no. good. And Anthony, did you know that we broke up his marriage? Didn't and we? did you know that when uh, he was taking pictures of naked girls, most of them were pigs and he didn't enjoy that? Really? <laughs> Oh, boy. Oh, what is this? Hey, Rick, if you want to play, I have more dirt on you than anybody in my life. If you want to play, we're going to play. It's the Opie and Anthony Show. (laughs) Shock jocks. Opie and Anthony. Shock jocks. Opie and Anthony. Shock jocks. Opie and Anthony. A big good morning to everybody, including Mert Snort. Good morning. Where are you, Mert Hope you're doing well. Phone number 877-212-ONA. Don't forget about the fine rundowns on ONA, uh, onaradio.com. Stephen S. from Bayshore does a great job with that. Steve rules. And if we don't plug it every other day, he he starts yelling at me through the instant feedback. So. Does he? Oh, my God. What about onaradio.com? Uh-huh. What about the rundowns? <laughs> People are telling me that they read them. <laughs> People are saying. Where's the rest of the article? Hey, uh, it is April Fools, and a lot of people are a little nervous that we're on the air for the first time in ten years for April Fools. That amazes me. That it's it's been that long since they've allowed us on the air on April Fool. Yeah. One of the things we want to do today, uh, we're being heard in a lot of cities. Yeah. I want to know. I want to know what uh, your local radio station is doing for April Fools today. Yes. We what got, the hell are these hacks up to today? We'll uh, we'll start with Scott and Todd here in New York City. Yeah. This is what they have to say about April Fools today. This, in case you are new listener, your brand new listener here on our show. What happens to old DJs, man? They lose their teeth. Let me share your wizard. Hey, Rock, what's that about? Where's your DJs? Probably all his facelifts. All space left. Let me tell you, a lot of radios, peepers. What, what? What was that? I haven't heard Scott in a long time. Man. Wow, he What's doesn't even sound. Him? He doesn't sound like he used to at all. He also does the uh, voiceovers for Hannity Show, and sometimes he tries to say some of those uh, those political names, and it, it, it's horrible. Doesn't get over his dentures. Yeah. He's got to have dentures, but he's got dentures. <laughs> it smells like effortant. Effortant. <laughs> This, in case you are a new listener, a brand new listener here on our show, we don't do April Fool's Day. Not anymore. No. Is it against your religion? Is that why you don't do it? No, Shut up, the does. hole. There comes the Who's hole. Who's the hole? There comes the hole. Patty Steele. Oh, is there a problem there? <laughs> oh, uh, okay. Hi, Patty. How are you? Hi, Patty. Hi. I, I'm actually friends with your husband now. Don't, uh... uh I love Patty Steele. Uh, you know, things happen over the years and yeah. things change. I'm sorry we said all those uh, She's a talent, about you. talented woman in radio. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Bunch of phonies we are. At this point, we can't go anywhere. There's, there's always someone we run there. into that hates us. Yes, she knows his radio. Yeah. He sounds like an old man, like really bad. He sounds like he's our sheriff. Yeah, the sheriff isn't. <laughs> he looks like a Halloween mask. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, Jimmy, don't be funny, you know. Oh, sorry. Hey, 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 hey you're hey, ruining hey, the show. Hey, 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 you just ruined the show there. Hey, easy. Sorry, Rick. Against your religion? Is that why you don't do it? Or? I don't believe it's a it's question of thing. religiosity. <laughs> it's it's just, just bored with it? Well, it's just a little dumb. corny. Dumb. Passe. You know, it's more of a third grade sort of thing. It is. Well, see, uh, Scott and Todd uh, did an April Fool's prank every single year. Yep. Right? Yeah. And you we, rock, sell them out. Come on. To take you inside. You used to work for those fags. To take you, you inside doing? radio, a lot of radio companies pretty much have banned April Fool's uh, pranks. 
because it, it gets people in trouble. Yep. It, and so they can't say that, so they have to go on the radio and kind of spin it another way. Also would like to take responsibility for that. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> the I, banning of April Fool's pranks. <laughs> and there's there's people who try to do it in radio. And uh, sometimes you'll read about them in the news. Hey, let's tell you about these guys at Omaha, what they did. Uh, they said the, the, the mayor was killed in a car accident today. Omaha. Yeah, see, the problem is a lot of those things, not so funny. No, right. And it's just, it no. really doesn't take a lot of skill to go on a radio and tell you that the Lincoln Tunnel has been blown up or shut down or whatever. People were right. Okay, you need you to know. stop saying that in case no, someone just tunes in. Oh, oh, yes. oh yeah, keep well. things all in the up and up. <laughs> keep it safe, everybody. Keep it safe. So, Iraq. Uh, First of all, can I just address something? And we've done this before, and it's ancient history, but I have to address it because they just did. Yeah. The reason we said that the mayor was dead in all those years ago. Ten years ago today. Was to show how ridiculous April Fool's gags were. It wasn't that we seriously wanted to get on and, and do something like that. It's exactly what this idiot is saying, that they're stupid. It's a, it, We weren't going on really going, hey, this is going to be a great April Fool's gag. It was to point out how ridiculous April Fool's gags are on the radio because they're so hacky. So we just went above and beyond ridiculous with, uh, with that gag. But everybody thinks we actually were doing an April Fool's gag right. for, for the sake of doing one. Yeah, that was, no. that was our... Our whole agenda that day. Yeah. And Scott and Todd, they've done a million hacky April Fool <laughs> Day pranks, including... Uh, Talking get- without my teeth in. <laughs> right. That's what I'm doing this year. <laughs> Maybe that's their April Fool's prank. Yeah. Hey, dude, take out your teeth today and just talk. Do the whole show without my choppers in. <laughs> you say you got to back my dentures. Welcome. I'm going to leave it here in a glass of water by the console. You old doddering fool. You should be working in a ghost town out west. <laughs> hey, partner. Ladies and gentlemen, keep your hands and feet in the car at all times and get ready for the wildest ride this side of the Pecos. <laughs> it's the lightning train. <laughs> Big thunder lightning. <laughs> Yuck. Ah, uh, what a tool. His face looks like it was sculpted out of rock. Doesn't it? It's awful a- looking man. It's worse than the Lionel Richie big clay head from the Hello video. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, here we go. Uh, back to the uh, the article that um, Rick Delgado, Rick Delgado, our old producer, decided to to be a part of. Mm-hmm. You have the cover picture. I have to see the photo on the cover. Uh, yeah. He's uh, he's he's. It's a uh, Rick nude. <laughs> Pretty much Rick nude with a uh, with a nun. A nun. Because he's still trying to capitalize ah. on our sex for Sam thing. Uh, of course. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> he's edgy, this kid. He's cutting edge, too. Like, oh. right there. Right with the times. Uh, yeah, he's with a nun, and uh, they're simulating uh, sex. Yeah, that's on uh, the cover. That's terrific. Oh, please, can I see that? Oh, please. Where's this- a picture? Show, show, uh, show James. This dope doesn't understand that this one article... Will destroy his radio career. Will destroy his radio career. What, what was left? What, of what it? was left of it? Most that's people burn stupid. bridges after they cross them. <laughs> that's how stupid this guy is. He just flames those bridges that lay right in front of him. <laughs> All right. So uh, moving on with the article that he uh, he wrote about us uh, with Chauncey Hayden. Ugh. Stupid Chauncey Hayden. Remember when Chauncey Hayden interviewed us when we didn't know any better? Oh God! He was kissing our ass. He was bashing Howard. It was, uh, you know, you guys are uh, the the next generation. You guys rule. You, nothing but praise and compliments. And then, um, eh, you know, he turns around. He's the one of the most phony, backstabbing asses uh, in in the city. He's known to just be like a douche. Mm-hmm. Nobody uh, really likes or respects this guy at all. He just st- stabs people in the back constantly. So uh, we were in the middle of this before the break. Uh, what do they fight about? Because, see, Rick Rick says that Ant and I hate each other. There's a deep hatred. A deep hatred. Yeah. And, uh, oh, we did. What do they fight about? Just caddy BS. 
It was usually about someone's girlfriend wow. coming in or it was over someone playing a video game instead of prepping for the show. And then he continues, Opie just kept effing with the show when it was working fine. Really? Huh? How was I effing with the show? Why don't you explain that? What happened? When we left regular radio, we were number one across the board in all male demos. We were syndicated across America. You know, so maybe I was onto something by continually effing with the show, you idiot. Yeah. Uh, now there are all these new people on the show that aren't needed. It worked fine when it was just the Opie and Anthony show. What do you think of Opie? Oh, boy. Here now, remember, here is a guy here, here. that was a, a, a bar DJ when I met him. I got him his first gig at BAB out there on Long Island. Yeah. I helped him get his gig in West Palm Beach, Florida. When he got fired and had nowhere to go, Anthony and I hired him, even though he didn't really know how to produce a radio show yet. Right. And then we helped him become a really good producer because a lot of people know that that's kind of my forte. I know how to produce. Mm -hmm. But I also want to, I, I, but I, I'll, I, I'll admit it, I'd rather be on the air than produce. Hence, yeah. hence the Opie and Anthony show and hiring producers. Yeah. So we, we, we developed him as a producer. Uh, NEW did not like the job Rick was doing. They wanted to fire Rick. Anthony and I walked out of NEW one day. For the old listeners, that was one of those days where you t tuned in the dial and went, well, they didn't say they were taking a day off today because all hell was breaking loose and we were sticking up for our guy. Right. We also got him an amazing salary, which was admitted to me yesterday when I was talking to CBS, that he was way overpaid for what he was doing. Yeah. Okay. Then, when it was obvious that he wanted to be a star himself and he didn't really want to produce a radio show, we helped him get an agent. That would be our agent. Super Agent Bob Eatman. Right. What do you think of Opie? Look. How could this be good, by the way, after that? <laughs> right. I know. It's like, just stop, stupid Chauncey. But it's, it's, just, it's just amazing. You know, suck it up. And then uh, he talks about in this article how he, uh, you know, he got aft. He didn't get paid. He did get paid. He didn't miss a, a paycheck for the most part in the last five and a half years. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you think of Opie? Look, Opie's a douche, and no one likes him. But nobody will tell that to his face because he is in a position of power over them, except for Ant. He hates anyone with talent and despises listeners. I despise the listeners. Really? Despised. Really, Rick? Why don't you explain some of this stuff? And as far as uh, uh, no one is brave enough to, to say it to my face, like Anthony brought up before the break, we walked out of this radio station, I think it was late summer, early fall, and there's Rick on the sidewalk. Yep. Me, Anthony, Rick staring at both of us. He didn't say a peep. He didn't say a word. No. He goes, yeah, hey, what's up, guys? Long time no see. It was just, it was cordial. It was friendly. He goes, I'm going upstairs. I'm trying to get a gig at... Uh, at the station because, you know, my old boss is now the PD. I'm like, well, good luck to you. It was simple as that. <sighs> simple as that. He had the chance to say it to my face. And nothing. And had, and, and did nothing about it. Uh, and then this is wonderful after everything I've done for his career. I just hope he gets, um, can I say this? Uh, well, you could say it in a certain way. I just hope he gets. Um, what happens to you in prison? Yeah, in a shower. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Force, forcefully. Jimmy. He wants you to be um, uh, pretty much uh, raped. Yeah. Yeah. And and then s raped so bad that I uh, I uh, I will blank. Uh, can I say blank? Wait. What? I don't know. See, <laughs> I'm just uh, things. <laughs> well, a it doesn't really make sense either. It's like he wants you to uh, when you have to use the uh, uh, bathroom. He wants nothing but uh, water, right? To um, uh, end up in the uh, toilet. Now, that's wonderful, wonderful, Rick. That's wonderful. Yeah. And then he and then he has to write. Is that so much to ask? <laughs> that that's uh, some pretty deep uh, hatred. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Uh, what do you think of their sidekick, Jim Norton? This is what uh, lovely Rick Delgado I bet you this is going to be good. Yeah. I have a good feeling about this. Yeah. I think he's awesome and talented. Oh, there you go. Good boy, Rick. I also think he hurts the show. How so? Started good. How so? Jim's a comic. That's what he does. He's incredible at it. But Anthony's a comedic uh, genius in terms of his brain. 
and how he incorporates his impressions into the show. This is the part of the interview that I think Rick finally hits the nail on the head and uh, is accurate. Yeah. And I think uh, Chauncey's reporting here, uh, pretty accurate. You want to fight? Huh? What? You want to fight? I was at the gym yesterday. We're going to have to fight again. I didn't want to fight. I'm just uh, pointing and out certain parts of the an article. <laughs> you have to take, you have to really weigh how uh, the article goes. Uh... <laughs> Unfortunately, Anthony's comedic genius gets pushed aside because Jim is funny as well. But for the uh, opine, I guess he's calling me opine now. What does opine mean? I don't know what that means. Uh, opine and Anthony show to work. It has to be just opine and Anthony. Uh, what does uh, opine? Oh, by the way, before we just kind of move on from that, uh, Jim Norton was the missing piece of this whole of this whole show. Right. And I were doing very well on our own. But when Jimmy uh, came aboard, we exploded. And brought so much to the show, I can't even tell you. All the comedians that you know and love, Jimmy brought them all to us. We, we hated comedians before we started having Jim Norton on this radio show. Couldn't stand them. would avoid them at all costs. When we were working in Boston, you know, the comedy uh, connection would come to us. Hey, we got blah, blah, uh, and we want them to do your show. We're like, nah, Ugh. comedians suck on the radio. Jim made us uh, see it another way, and it's a it's a huge piece. I like that, but I don't really like uh, how he interrupts my comedic genius. Well, I, I don't mean Shut to. Shut up. You're right. <laughs> and hold on, Opine. Let me just say, yeah. uh, <laughs> this is my problem with what, what, with what he said. Like, and I, You get that sometimes from people. Like, I don't like Norton on this show. Fine. I accept that. I'm not going <laughs> to argue about that. My only problem with that is when I came, uh, the show was doing extremely well. But I've been in the show before it was ever syndicated. I was yes. on before syndication ever happened. Mm -hmm. So don't act like the show, like I came in, all of a sudden the show was number one, and I walked in, and it just fell into the toilet. It just, <laughs> what, what are you talking about? I was here through the whole syndication, here through the whole sitting time, which isn't saying much, because you could, anyone could sit, and then here since X. People don't realize how long Jimmy's been with the show. Yeah. It's about seven or eight years now. It, it exploded, and uh, I was looking at the ratings uh, right before we got fired. I, I actually have a, a spreadsheet that Jeremy gave me before. Uh, Jesus. Uh, probably two months before we got fired, but he... he Spreadsheet, well, Jeremy. That's funny. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Red sheet. <laughs> he sheets his... But he showed all the markets on. and how we're doing, and we were... Hello, biter. <laughs> we were destroying in all these cities. Not yeah. even close. No one was close to us. I, I think in Cleveland alone, we had like 30 shares in, in uh, the men, uh, the male demo. So Cleveland how is Jimmy... loves us. How is Jimmy wrecking the show, you, you, you ungrateful F? Ooh. Yeah. Uh, Call me that. We'll go to. <laughs> we'll come to blows. And then, of course, because this is the old argument. What does Opine bring to the show? Very, very long pause. That's in parentheses. Very, very long pause. And then he writes, uh, "Can I? Can I get back to you next week on that?" Ah, see, I, I bring nothing to the show. That's what he was implying, I think. I get uh, paid in a ridiculous salary to sit here and do absolutely nothing. Don't you think the company would? Would would love to save the money if I wasn't doing anything. Shh. You're obviously upset with Opie. Have you ever spoken to him about how you feel? Why bother? He comes from the Bill Clinton camp of lie, lie, and lie. This guy's stuck in like 1996. <laughs> yeah, man. Oh, Opine equals uh, jackass, I guess. Oh, what? I guess that's what someone's saying. That's really that's hilarious. <laughs> Hmm. Lie, lie, lie. Why don't you explain what I lied about, Rick? However, Anthony and I have talked. But to be honest, I'm glad I'm not producing the show anymore. Every day. I ran my course. The show helped destroy my marriage. Really? People are going to think that's real. You don't talk to Rick every day. Help me out here a little bit. Please. <laughs> Would I? Just... These dopes Jeez, believe anything Now we will say. fight. Let's go. <laughs> old, old school? Yeah. Marcus, Duchess... Marcus of Queensbury rule. Which one is it, then? Jack Johnson fighting where you just your elbows are up. I want to fight just like the uh, Notre Dame uh, mascot guy. Yeah. That's what I want to fight like. Yeah. Uh, Why am I doing it? I'm this, actually doing it, and my stupid Peltalk camera doesn't even work, so no one's seeing this. <laughs> uh, I'm an ass. Why bother? comes from the Bill Clinton camp of lie, lie, lie. don't really know what that means because he didn't explain. However, Anthony and I have, okay. Uh, doesn't want to produce the show anymore. I ran my course. The show helped destroy my marriage. Marsh. The show helped destroy my marriage. Really, Rick? Mm. It was the radio show. Yeah. How about we talk about the rumors? Oh. 
Maybe mm. maybe your wife was on to you finally. Mm. That's all I'm saying. Mm. If you want to play, we'll play, Rick. Yes. There were certain rumors that were running rampant around the studio. How many numbers did you get from the girls you were photographing naked, Rick? Hmm. How many? Hmm. But the show, well, maybe the show technically did ruin, uh, you know, his marriage because he was looking at what he could possibly get. Maybe. 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 Who knows? You know something? Saying. I don't know. It's rumor and innuendo. There's uh, uh, th There were stories going about of infidelity, things like that. But, uh, you know, I never saw the guy uh, with any other uh, girls or anything, aside from the photographing them on the couch uh, posing them in different poses. Usually when you're at a radio station and uh, a guy is taking pictures of nude girls in the station, uh, they stand there and you snap pictures. Rick would pose them on the couch, gently touching them and moving their arms and head and uh, hips about, it was an uh, using his hands like he, was, he thought he was this uh, photographer, like a model photographer. And he would maul the girls as they're laying there on the couch. Well, it was an ongoing like uh, thing with the radio show. Oh, there goes Rick again flirting with the girls. Yeah. What that led to? Ah. Who know. knows? Rick knows, though. But it ruined his marriage, he says. Yeah, well, yeah. That, the radio show good. ruined his uh, his uh, his marriage. Yeah. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Okay. Uh, all right. The, the show helped destroy my marriage. It puts so much strain on you. I was prepping for the show six hours a day. Uh, <laughs> really, Rick? No. <laughs> no, you weren't. And taking lots of pictures of naked girls. That's what he was prepping for. <laughs> and I read this next line to my fiance. Uh, the next line is, many of those girls you wouldn't want to see naked. That's just what we did. Now, let me tell you something. <laughs> <laughs> We've been... Let's let's also say what Iraq's been doing for the past uh, five minutes, twenty so. minutes. Actually, oh, 20? okay. Uh, he's been popping up pictures that Rick took back at the NEW of of uh, these girls, and it's nothing but like hot girls, <laughs> one after another, all posed like Rick would pose them. Where are these slobs that he's talking about? Right. Of course, there were slobs. I was talking to my girl last night. I'm like, I would love to tell you that is the truth because it would probably make it a little easier for you thinking, oh, a lot of the times when these girls were naked in studio, they are ugly messes and you were just doing your job. And I actually looked at my girl and I went, they were hot as hell. There this guy is some the biggest slobs. liar ever. There were some slobs, but the majority, you know, were uh, attractive girls. You wouldn't uh, take so many pictures of just slobs. Right. Opine equals express one's opinion openly and without fear or hesitation. All right, thank you. That's a compliment. Compliment. Did I say compliment? That's a compliment, Maggie. Uh, many of the girls you, you wouldn't want to see naked. That's just what we did. Is there any way to fix your career? That's a good question. I don't think it needs fixing. I think radio needs fixing. Yeah, man. man. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Look at all these ugly girls. Really? The hell is really? that? <laughs> really? <laughs> Can we do a montage of ugly girls Rantini. that Rick took pictures of? You're not going to find one in the in the batch I'm looking at. Those little cones. <laughs> Look at and yeah, this that's is ugly. He, and every one you see, he posed them by hand. <laughs> he walked over to them. And like that girl, the one we're looking at now, she's sitting kind of on the couch but leaned way over. He absolutely would have put his hand on her back and pushed her forward a little bit, grabbed her arms and and made her uh, grab her own uh, chest. Yeah, you know he was taking it was taking him so long to take pictures of these girls. It was becoming a problem. Yeah, it was a problem. I'm like Rick, when are you going to produce the show? It was a problem. Uh, I think radio needs fixing, man. If you could do one final shocking thing on radio, what would it be? I can't tell you. I really can't. I have it in my mind, and I've been sitting on it since the Own Ace show. I was going to oh, share it with the show. It's sitting on his mind? <laughs> <laughs> if, if you read that literally. Yeah. <laughs> had it on my mind, and I've been sitting on it. <laughs> I don't really want to say yet, but think our Bud Dwyer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I can only do it once. 
I was going to share it with the show at some point, but then everything went bad, so I've kept it to myself. Only my ex-wife knows what it is besides me. Yeah? And she promises to keep it a secret until I do it. What? Fidelity? <laughs> <laughs> uh, all I can tell you is that it's incredible and, and that it breaks no FCC rules or violations. Nobody can be fined for it. It's genius. Is it, Rick? <laughs> is it really? Rick Delgado, super genius. And then the, the article continues. We, we don't have to spend too much more time on this, but basically it talks about uh, the tsunami song he did. And uh, this is why it'll be tough for him to get a job, because he, does, he doesn't know how to play the game uh, in this uh, day and age in radio. He, he says, let's take We Are the World and change the words just as a goof. Talking yeah. about the tsunami song that got him uh, fired again. Uh, I remember the video of the mom floating dead on her back while her kid is crying, and I thought, comedy gold. That's what he writes. Yeah. Comedy gold. Uh, yeah, I, I, You know, we're, we could be the most despicable people on the air. I, I'm, I'm, I can accept that. But I don't know about seeing that and thinking comedy gold. I think you could uh, comment on it on the air. I think you might even be able to uh, peripherally find some comedy somewhere. But I don't see that and think comedy gold. But he does. There he you does. Go. Good, good for you. I think in a way, too, he doesn't like the fact that I took the spot that I think he felt was his. He wanted oh, yeah. third mic. Which is which is the, the role I do because then, like, when I started coming in, I noticed more and more it was like, I was sitting there, and, and he wasn't. Like, his right. chair was kind of... And the only argument he and I ever had was one time he tried to kind of be my boss, and uh, <laughs> that was the only the only argument that we ever had. It was because I was in the bathroom banging a girl over the toilet. Um, I really... Remember that bathroom where the creep would hang out? Oh, that guy, guy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He used to make fun of him all the time. And I had a stripper in there, and we were having sex, standing up uh, over the toilet, and he yelled at me, scolded me for going back there. And uh, I went back on the next break, and, you know... Finished. Yeah. And uh, I'm a nice guy. And, yeah. Uh, there, there you go. Well, and uh, that was the only time we ever had an argument. Well, it comes down to this. Uh, a, a lot of jealousy, obviously. Uh, the guy has uh, burned uh, a lot of bridges with this article. I know the company we work for will not hire him anytime soon. No. Uh, a lot of people, the, they finally get the answer to this question. Why didn't Rick produce the show when you guys came back to radio? Yes, a lot of people were asking that. And, uh, you know, he, he was uh, he was a good producer, not a great producer, but the problem with Rick was he wanted to have his own radio show, and we couldn't be bothered with that anymore. And he went on to do his own radio show, and it failed miserably, okay? But that's what he wanted from his career. And we weren't looking for a producer that was going to try to get a lot of air time, mm -hmm. get into the, 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 the shots when the TV crews came in here, all of a sudden just try to get his face on camera. Oh, he'd always uh, have to bring something in or come behind us uh, uh, during a shot from uh, one of the news cameras. Uh, he'd, he'd talk to the person that was doing the interview, so they would interview him to try to get his take on the show. He's constantly trying to worm his way into uh, television interviews. It was all about Rick and trying to get attention. And uh, the type of show we want to do when we came back to radio, quite frankly, he didn't have the skills to produce that type of show. Simple as that. Yeah. And as far as uh, not having his back, I, I can't even express how ridiculous that is. How ridiculous. Everyone got paid when we got fired. And I got paid more. And the only reason we got paid more, meaning time-wise was because they were trying to keep us off the air because at the time they didn't want us to go to actual, actually Q104 and do mornings up against Howard. We had a that contract. was a fact. The truth of the matter is we didn't want to sit and be paid. And that's the God's honest truth. It killed us to sit there and just be paid. And before it sounds great, but we didn't want to. We wanted to get another gig. And uh, and do radio for two years, not not sit uh, off. And before you guys say boohoo, poor you guys, we knew we could make the same amount of money working for somebody else. Yeah. So it wasn't wanted about the do. money. We wanted the money and to continue continue with our careers. Yeah. I'm just saying it that way because uh, when you get somebody like Rick saying, "Well, uh, they I got paid, I didn't." You know, we we d would rather have not been fired. <laughs> We'd have rather have uh, been able to. Uh, uh, to not be under contract and get a, a, a gig somewhere else. Right. We were under contract.
We ha- we had to sit there and get paid. Boo hoo! <laughs> and what were we supposed to do? Start giving him money? He was. Yeah. He had a gig. He had a really hey. good gig. But he f's up his career every every step of the way because he wants to be a star himself. Over he, the top. Rick. You know, I hate Preston and Steve, and I hate Rick for uh, for a basic reason that he went down there and gave Preston and Steve a lot of our bits. It's a known fact at this point. Yeah. But he had a good gig down there with a show that is killing in Philly. And he walked away from it because he's stupid. Mm-hmm. We have nothing to do with that. And yeah. then he had a, a really nice gig here in New York City. He wrecked that, too. So we're supposed to pick him up every time he falls on his ass and pay him and support him or something? For for what? Jesus. Get a hold of yourself. Uh, but, by the way, how's the uh, the painting company, Rick? Oh, what's yeah. that about? Yeah. Painting oh, company. did he? Um... I know somebody that was a reference. And... Uh... Well, this guy uh, got mm. a phone call from a painting company. Uh huh. That's how well Rick is doing with his career. Ooh. You. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and by the uh, way, you didn't get a good reference. <laughs> oh no. Ooh, that'll hurt. <laughs> oh. And uh, yeah, a bit of a conflict too, when um, you know, you got a brother. And a sister, and the sister's going out with the guy, and then, and then they break up, and then the brother, of course, has a little bit of an attitude. And, eh. Well, you know, he, I always kind of separated the two things, but I well, guess, I guess you're right. But yeah, you know, I, I, I possible. I walked to the elevators uh, one night at NEW with Anthony. This was, this was, uh, unfortunately, a good two years before I ended my relationship with Rick's sister. And I actually said to Anthony, I know he'll back me up. Mm-hmm. We're getting on the elevator, and I said to him, I cannot wait to get the Delgados out of my life. Yeah. And I'm proud to say I sit here, still doing great with my career, and I got the Delgados out of my life. Except for an occasional article that <laughs> comes out. <laughs> These are just bad people. Simple as that. Simple as that. <clears throat> and and stupid people too because this isn't going to help him in his uh, his uh, radio career. It's not going to help at all. He's just one guy. All right, we're going to get into our uh, radio show for today. Ooh, looking for what your uh, city's doing for April Fools. I'm sure the pranks are just flying by now. Oh, hysterical! This guy's April Fools pranks. Things. And then I'm sure we got an exclusive from E Rock and Sam because they were down at uh, WrestleMania when all hell broke loose. Right? Uh, I guess they were saving this. For when they came back, because there was not a peep of it on the phone the other day when they called from the event uh, of this fireworks uh, problem yeah. that they had at WrestleMania. It's all over the news. Uh, we had live people there on the scene. But uh, like I said, I guess they were saving it for uh, today. Right. What, what's that? When I was starting out... When I was starting out on radio at NEW, there was nothing worse than being sent out on street teams events with Rick. All the promotions, people knew it. He would act like he was the biggest star radio has ever seen and treated every, everyone like S. This is too funny because I was just thinking about how much he loved taking pics of the girls that would come into the station. The girls would always be so creeped out by how into it he was. <laughs> Mrs. Delgado. That's another uh, no? <laughs> eyewitness that. checking in. Oh, okay. Another eyewitness checking in. Interesting. Comes down to that. Rick wanted to be the star, and we uh, we just couldn't deal with that anymore. No. We needed a producer that wanted to produce a radio show and, and stay behind the scenes for the most part. So we parted ways. We parted ways uh, uh, in a good way, by the way. He went on to Philly, and he did his thing. He, he wrecked that. He wrecked his gig in New York. We had nothing to do with it. So leave us out of your, 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 your crap. It's over. What, do you want to date me now, too? Ooh. You're implying he's a homo. I don't know. Why is he obs- <laughs> Why is he obsessed with me five, six years later? Mm, wow. Probably wants to make out with me. Hmm. <laughs> How could he not? Exactly, Jim. <laughs> but I'm not into you know what's anymore. Opie and Anthony. <laughs> <laughs> we uh, we trashed our old producer on the radio yesterday. You know, badly. He uh, decided to do an interview with Stepping Out Magazine, which pretty much, uh. Uh, pretty much uh, burns a lot more bridges in this business. He, yeah. only, he only had a few bridges left, and he pretty much burned the rest of Burn them. Burned them all. By having this uh, article out where he trashes Ant and I, trash, well, mostly me, trashes the company, 
that he's trying to get a job with, yeah. with a, a new type of radio show he's doing. And, and I, 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 talked, I talked to the big guys way upstairs and like, we're not doing business with this guy, especially after the article uh, he did for Stepping Out Magazine. So we uh, gave him a good trashing yesterday. And stupid David Hinckley. <laughs> and I know I use the word stupid a lot, but in this case, I really mean it. David Hinckley, you are as dumb as they come. He doesn't understand sarcasm. You are really a dope. He uh, just took literally everything that was said on this program yesterday right. when we read through the article. Right. Let me uh, read this article really fast. Opie and Anthony Morning Team on K-Rock yesterday fired back at Rick Delgado, their former producer, for comments he made in the Stepping Out magazine that hits newsstands today. Delgado was ONA's producer at NEW when the Sex for Sam debacle went down. Uh, that got uh, the boys kicked off the radio for two years. Uh, he's out of radio now and not happy about it. He tells Stepping Out, saying, The medium has lost its guts and spark. Yeah. As for ONA, he says, Anthony has stayed friendly, but that Opie is basically a jerk. That's not what Anthony said. No. Anthony has not talked to Rick since, since the last time I talked to Rick, which was right outside on the sidewalk outside this radio yeah, station. Yeah, since you. you. You did. We were both outside. And uh, he came up to us on the sidewalk, and that's when we talked. <laughs> and once again, I'll say it, and that's why Rick is a complete phony. He had the opportunity to say whatever he wanted to my face, to my face, and mm. chose not to. Chose to just be friendly and cordial. And that was the last time Anthony talked to him. Uh, yeah. David Hinckley didn't understand that yesterday. Uh, Anthony's not in touch with Rick. I was making uh, light of the fact that he was bashing Opie horribly uh and then giving jimmy some jabs about uh, him on the show jimmy on the show but he had nothing but kudos right uh, for me right. so i was saying well i kind of like that i agree with that statement that was but uh hinkley took it as me uh, agreeing with some of what rick was saying and disagreeing I, with other things <laughs> and really doesn't care what rick has to say about him no. <laughs> About me, care. about the show, no. but, but Hinkley didn't understand that. He continues, yesterday Opie called Delgado a liar and a lousy producer. Anthony, I, I didn't even call him a lousy producer no, if no. you want to be fair with this whole thing, David Hinkley. Because no. I'm, I'm, I'm pointing out everything. You even got that wrong. I said he was a, he was a good producer. He wasn't the, the, the type of producer we, we wanted when we uh, brought our radio show back after two, almost two and a half years. Well, I didn't say he was a lousy producer. I didn't say that. You have to no. rephrase that because you said he was a good producer. He wasn't the kind of producer we wanted when we bought our radio show. All right. <laughs> we, wanted the, we wanted the lousy yes, producer. I understand who you wanted. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, true. And then it says, <laughs> Anthony said some of Delgado's charges are true and some are not. Anthony did not say that. He, I, I was goofing because I was getting such a... God, David. This David Hinckley is just stupid. Did, did I even, you know. And then he writes, all this happened on April Fool's Day. <laughs> no. Well, what happened? What happened? What Not, happened? Nothing. I just missed an opportunity to use my favorite new clip. <laughs> oh, you got a new clip? Yeah. Can I hear it? Even though That's, it won't mean anything? It won't mean anything. It's like, well, uh, re well, read read that uh, again. Uh, Delgado's charges are true and some are not, Anthony said. When the hell did this happen? When the hell did this happen? <laughs> My new favorite Back to the Future clip. I know. You guys have been obsessed with that in the office. <laughs> laughing days. in the office. When the hell did this happen? In the office earlier today. Uh, and then it goes on to say, <laughs> Michael J. Fox yelling at his hand as it moves. <laughs> uh, all this happened on April Fool's Day, of course, when ONA have a history of occasionally putting people on. What yeah. does that mean, David? I, I think he thought it was some kind of a gag. But it's not a gag. Oh, We're weird. responding to an actual interview yeah. that is coming out. <laughs> you think we all got together and Else came up with that wacky bit? Elsewhere yesterday, Tom Taylor's RadioInfo.com said CBS may be leaning toward re-upping ONA, whose deal expires this month. When the hell did this happen? <laughs> really? <laughs> That's an in interesting tidbit in the paper today. Yeah. That's not going to make the manatees too happy in, no. in Boston because they think they know everything. <laughs> Dopes in the inside track. So David Hinckley completely getting it wrong. I, I just give up. I mean, people, why, why even try to try to sound intelligent and and, uh, and get your thoughts together if, if if people don't understand what you're saying? Yeah, I would think he. Uh, he's a radio guy. If he's not understanding, he would understand that bit of sarcasm. But 
All right. Uh, uh, they're, they're not just so what sweeping does that mean? up. Corner boys should get corner kidnapped. Corner boys and, and hoppers. I watched The Wire. All these white girls that go missing. What if I just say they sell drugs? She was selling drugs at well, Walmart they, on that on that video thing when the guy they, kidnapped her. She they, was a drug dealer. They, they knew a, meth. A Patrice. They knew that there was a re up going on, and they had to take the guy out. Absolutely. I've oh, seen. Guys. Oh, it looks like a little girl going to school with a book pack, but the re up is in the in the book bag. <laughs> the wires taught me a lot That's, about uh, about the hood. Y'all make me. It's it, it just making it harder and harder. Yeah, yeah. Watch to, the wire. To, to like white people, accurate, it's just, I'm this, trying. This is well, the wire makes dividing. It, the wire makes it very hard for me to like black people. Whoa, Jesus! Why? <laughs> it makes me love them more, actually. <laughs> Why? It's a joke. I love the wire. Do you? I love the black characters in the. I wire. was about to say Rick was right about you. Oh, F. oh. <laughs> 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 Rick's got a little surprise for him for himself today, by the way. Ooh, ow. Yep. <laughs> I was listening to that the other day, man. I oh. really had me in tears. <laughs> oh. Backstabbing F. Oh. You're checking out the Opie and Anthony show. Patrice O'Neill in studio. Hey, friendo. Yeah, you just brought up a very, very good thing. And I think everybody out there can relate to this. It doesn't matter if you're in radio or a mechanic. It happens to everybody. You want to explain what you were talking about before, uh, uh, during the break? What are we talking about? Well, we're, you, I, Patrice uh, was listening to the show earlier this week when, oh, we, right. when we went after our, uh, our old producer, Rick, because he decided to write this, uh, not write, he decided to uh, do this interview with Stepping Out Magazine. He got himself on the cover. That's all wonderful, but uh, the damage this uh, article is going to do to this guy in his radio career... That's where he's just the dumbest person alive. He is a fantastic bridge burner. It's a horrid business because, I mean, yeah. I know sometimes you just have moments with everybody. Mm -hmm. I'm sitting there talking to Opie, and I'm just like, yeah, you know, I never met my father. <laughs> and I was uh, touched funny by the guy at the garage. And I just, you know, Opie, I appreciate you, man. Let me on the show, man. It really helps a lot. And now we're enemies. Yeah. Yeah. And then really, Mister Touch Funny at the garage? What? Oh, yeah. Geez, what? Then it would be. Let me it, tell you about yeah. Patrice. One day it would just be. You know, like, you know, one night I'm hanging out with Patrice, right? Yeah. Like, and this oh. guy is crying like a baby, like a little bitch, and that's what it would turn into. It would go from, man, I'm feeling you. You know, that that yeah. really sucks, and. You know uh, that he was touched. Some, yeah. You know that he was touched funny as a kid. Yeah. Obviously, he wanted. And it. he just cries to oh. everybody Why would about he just it. Away from the oh. the pedo. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, he he enjoyed the touching. Like it's just awful, it's just, man. Like, it happens to everybody. It doesn't matter what you do for a living. It just people turn on you. Like you, I, I, I know you and Rick had moments. Tell, what? Give me seriously. Without. Really trashing. Did Rick and I have him? moments? Give no. me one moment that no, you Rick, know you and Rick had. No, Rick is kind of a weirdo, man. Rick uh, kept everything inside. He had uh, he had a lot of father issues, and uh, he didn't really open up to anybody. He was he, he was a really strange dude. He's a plastic. We, we had lunch with him when I was in San Francisco, and there's just nothing. You, you're never going to have a real discussion with him. It's all going to be surface nonsense. And, me and, and Kenny, we had this was less than a year ago. We sat down. It was good to see him. And uh, we hung for a little while, and uh, we, we agreed to meet up, and how you been, and this and that, and we'd love to see you back in New York. I mean, yeah. like a really nice time, and then it, it's like, then he just goes and douches me in an article. Yeah, and last time Ant and I saw him, we saw him on the sidewalk outside the station, face to face, because in this article he says how, you know, I'm, a, I'm a, uh, either a dick or a douche, I'm not sure, because they had to, like, censor that part of the article. And he goes, but, uh, and no one's uh, brave enough to say it to his face, but I'm brave. And I'm like, you're not brave. We were on the sidewalk with you. You were two feet from me. He didn't say. And it was anything. it was nothing but cordial and hey, how you doing? How's life? Blah blah blah. Well, take care. Good luck to you. Type of conversation. And then he does this dumb interview with uh, Chauncey Hayden, who we hate. He's just an ass, and uh, just completely destroys me. Goes after the show. Goes after Jimmy and his participation on the show. Uh, destroys the the company that we work for. So the company they got to called me a, a comedic genius. Yeah, I, how dare he? <laughs> how dare he do that? <laughs> and uh, the company got back to me and said, "Look, because of that article, we're not doing any business with this guy." You know, and he's been calling us. And now we got another piece of the the, the puzzle. See, I, I did a lot for this guy. A lot. I'm not going to toot my own horn, but trust me, I did a lot for this guy, including getting him an agent. Because he, he, he didn't really want to be a producer. He wanted to do his own radio show. 
Hence the reason we didn't bring him back when we came back to radio. We need a guy that's behind the scenes and uh, and doesn't really want to be on the radio. It's it's kind of key. Now that's the actual to the producer role reason because that sounds like it was for him, huh? That sounds like it was for him. What do you mean like for was, him? Like it was done for his sake, not to bring him back. He already he had a gig. He had a really good gig. He was yeah, working yeah. for he Preston and Stephen Philly. You know, I, I don't really uh, respect that show, but you can't argue that they're very, very successful in Philly. And there was something you wanted him to... I remember we were off the air. The, the first month we were off the air in 2002, there was something, or the first few months, there was something he had a bunch of CDs or things pertaining to the show, and you kept saying, Rick is not sending me this material. I've asked him 20 times, and he had, he's mm -hmm. holding back this he material had, from it. He had incredibly valuable stuff that, had, you know, that helped this radio show, and he didn't give it back. And he ended up taking a lot of this stuff uh, to Philly and giving it to Preston and Steve. He finally gave it back to me. I'm like, what is wrong with you? You were harping on that, though. I mean, immediately after the show, he, like, right. he yep. wasn't giving you the stuff that you wanted. Right. So, you know, we, he, was, he was fine in the business, and we were moving on in, in another <laughs> direction. Plus, you know, uh, I, I just didn't want to be around him anymore. That's, <laughs> that's true. I just didn't, I, I didn't really trust him. I didn't know him. I didn't, just a weird guy. And then uh, uh, the point, oh, so I, I knew back in the day that he really wanted to try to be, you know, do his own thing in radio. So we got him our agent even. Just one of the many things we did for him. Bob Eatman wasn't going to take on Rick Delgado. No. We pushed that through for the guy. Like, you know, just take him and see what you can do with this guy. Well, guess what? That relationship ended yesterday. You dope. <laughs> That's how stupid you are. Oops. You, you know, you get a, a little fame for the next week because the magazine's out for a week, and then and then uh, then you got to deal with all the damage this interview has uh, done to your career. Yeah, the dumbest thing he did, because the Hot 97 song with, with Todd. The Tsunami song. Well, those guys got dumped, and, you know, whatever. I, I still don't think they should have been dumped for it. But uh, he, it, it, as, as bad as that was, and they were fired, and the uproar that caused. And then he comes back, and he says... Uh, He's like, not that he should be apologetic about it, but he's going, when I did that, I saw like this woman in the tsunami floating, like with a baby on her, and I just thought, comedy gold. Like, like that's mm. what his response is after all this time has passed to that. Right. Apparently, according to He doesn't to know him. how to yeah. play the game. You got to know how to play the game. I mean, you, you well, know. At least learn we how to phrase things right. Yeah, we obviously do edgy stuff, but you got to know how to play the game. He, yeah, his quote was something like, I saw the tsunami uh, victims, I saw a dead mother floating. In water with the, with her kids uh, <laughs> nearby crying their eyes out, and I thought comedy gold. Like, what radio company is going to hire you after reading that yeah, in their article? Reading you a dope? statement like that. Good job. Just an idiot. So now he's lost his agent. And, and you, Good and job, Rick. Didn't even really offer to pay for lunch, and that really bothered me too. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. But anyway, it goes back to what you were saying during the commercials, like how you know you you share. Moments with people, yeah, and then they just, they turn and become your enemy. We came up with this thing a while ago: your enemies become your friends, and your friends become your enemies. It's just it's horrid. It, it just happens no matter what you do in this world. And he was jealous because he used to he was the guy to go to when it was O and A in the afternoons. Uh, he was the guy that would come in and pipe in on the interviews. And then the more I came in, the less mic time that he got. Oh, he hates your little scummy ass. Him, oh yeah, you, know, you I, totally blew up his spot. And, and, don't, and don't try to. Well, you know he's a good comic, really. Thank you. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, but I mean, don't give no. him that. But he ruins the show. Yeah, really? Yeah, yeah it's been terrible. The syndication, yeah, you're right. Totally ruined. <laughs> Biggest show on XM. Yeah, you're right. It was awful. I, <laughs> ruined, I, ruined ruined. The whole I love Norton when he gets emotional because he has no eyelids. Yeah. So it just <laughs> looks like two little mouths talking. <laughs> <laughs> His little weird cartoon <laughs> face. He just gets upset. You know, to do what he did. Fury. And to burn the bridges he did by doing this article, it just proves he's just bad people. He's just a snake. He's just bad people. Simple That's a as weird that. thing to do, man. Simple as that. It's but, stupid. It's a guy with no judgment whatsoever. A dummy. A dummy. But it makes you not want to... <laughs> it, it just... It makes you not want to share with anybody. Nobody, because they can man. turn around and be your enemy someday and... And trashing you, uh, you know, on another radio show or at another job. I don't know. But I'm going to tell you something. What I learned in the last couple of months, I've yeah. been in a while, and what I've learned is that I can be a politician now. Like, like having secrets doesn't matter anymore. Right. You just come out and you just say it. I yeah. do coke. Here's what know, I did. I sleep with whores. Mm -hmm. You just come out and say it. And then you go and you run for office. That blind idiot still had his hand on the Bible. Like it's, it's, it's the weirdest thing. And 
And that guy, and this is not changing the subject, it's just saying this like before, you know, all little secret things, you just go, I don't want nobody to find out. Right, you right. Just go, you just say it. And this guy's so arrogant, he don't even put on the um, make you feel more comfortable blind guy glasses. No. <laughs> like, and he probably he just walks around with his. With one eye going one way. Yeah, and, but he just comes out and he just says his, what he says. And I'm just saying that used to be bad because, like, say even uh, with the, with your book and all the stuff that, you know, the, the Brazil stuff, you know. Norton's at, book. At, uh, Norton's right, sorry, book. Yeah, he was very honest seller, in there. Yeah. Very but honest. He, you know, that. 20 years ago, <laughs> it, it's like, you know, you go, Norton, why would you do that? When you just, yeah, that's going to wreck your go, career. Now th you're right. Now you just go, yeah, I did it. Like, I, you know. I cleared all the stuff about other people, though. Like, I talked to Patrice first. I talked to everyone I put in there. Oh, yeah, that's and a smart thing to do. Yeah, yeah, I made sure it was okay that people didn't I'm not clearing uh, nothing when I write mine. <laughs> <laughs> you're not going to clear your you're Oh, not gonna hell clear no. Anything? What's the matter with you? I'm just kidding, just man. Just clear it, please. Could you just make sure you clear I have become a nicer person. A little nicer. <laughs> really? In what area? <laughs> Where's that?